Race is done. Picked up the prizes. Pitching! I think this is the biggest stack of preems I had racing in my life, which is good. All right, guys, the biggest stack of preems I had so far. Um, welcome, first, welcome to another race video. It's uh, been a while that I did these videos. I took a little break off editing uh, during summer, but I was still racing. So I did record a couple races. I had this on my computer, so here we go um, with the edit. This is a criterium in Pool Dijk. So it's in the Netherlands. We're racing Pro Elite. Very high level, super fast. There's no data right now because I uh, forgot to turn on my computer, but it will get uh, on the screen later when I remember. I'm gonna show you guys the first, uh, first lap to see how the lap is. It was a very fast lap. This straight away was crazy bumpy. You don't really, really see it, but it was super, super bumpy. These brick roads are just not smooth at all. I had um, tube, tubular wheels on this race, and I, I did, uh, I had pretty low pressure. I think only about five and a half bars. So I, I was pretty low on pressure because of that straight away. The rest was pretty fast this is all bricks but not as bumpy as the other side of the course here we are approaching start finish and really the speed of this race the first 20 minutes it was everything was over 45k an hour it was insane ridiculous so fast uh, there was only about two a little bit sharper corners but for Dutch standards it was not even that sharp we're approaching one right now and we're in a bunch so it's a bit hard to go through it fast but if you would be single file you could still go about 40k an hour through this corner and then the other corners were pretty much all super fast pedaling corners except the last corner uh, before the finish so here we are data is on the screen as you can see speed is super high for 50 50k and over uh, the power will be at the bottom. You can always see my heart rate and then uh, obviously the distance and the time into the race is not entirely correct because I only started after a lap and a half. On the top right is the track layout and also that is not completely correct because the start finish is at the top and not at that little uh, checkered flag thingy that you can see. So anyway, approaching start finish again for the third time right now. And as I said, over 50k an hour, super fast. For me, this was the first few kilometers of this race, or the, f the first part of this race, I was just hanging on. I didn't want to fall back too far to the end because I knew it was going to be harder. Um, I only had a couple races. I only did a couple races this year. So I was still really trying to get into the groove of the crits. I only did three crits in the Netherlands and it was going better and better and I started feeling really good and I noticed on the last crit that even in the end when everybody started to get really really tired I was still pretty fit so I was, I was going to try to be more proactive in this criteria so that's what I'm gonna show you guys right now I will show you how I got into the breakaway and how we won a whole stack of preems in this breakaway. Because these crits here in Holland, if you do the right criteriums, they throw preems at you with multiple envelopes at the time. It's crazy. And all these preems are always for the first couple riders. So when they ring the bell, it's always the first five or the first eight riders that cross the finish. They will get a preem. Meanwhile, we're going... 55 over 55k an hour right now on the finishing street it's crazy and as you can see everything is really bumpy except this part the rest was very very bumpy hence the very low tire pressure i chose so uh i did want to be uh, active in this race but at the speed of the beginning of this race uh i wasn't gonna attack right now uh, and these, a lot of these races go this fast in the beginning. Uh, that's pretty usual. I guess it's a big, um, 
it's a way to split, you know, the very strong riders and uh, to fatigue other riders. And it's also attack after attack after attack off the front and it's a constant chase. So that's really why the speed is going up so high. So I really had to wait for the right moment. Um, I figured if I try to attack right now, apart from the speed being so high, you know, everybody's super, super motivated to to, uh, to jump on your wheel and, and bring it back. So I just wanted to stay with the first, what, 20 riders? Because if you go too far to the back, you know, you'll, you'll be in the accordion effect. So you're actually braking, accelerating even more. So that's going to be even harder. So I tried to stay somewhat to the front. Also to be able to see what was going on, uh, to save energy, although sometimes you're in the wind, but you can go through the corners much faster. And in these races, it can be done in a split second. So if you're in wheel number 50, you're never gonna see what's going on in front. So, and you're, you're wasting energy, uh, and you're not seeing what's happening in the race. So it's way better to stay in the front. And if it's all single file, it doesn't really matter if you're in, in fifth or tenth wheel. You're gonna have the same sort of the same draft. If it's a big, wide open race track and it bunches up a lot, then it really makes a difference whether you're in the bunch in, in sort of the peloton drafting or if you're in the front. But when it's all single file like this and it's super bumpy and we have so many corners, everybody is almost pushing the same amount of power. So it doesn't really matter. So after maybe 25 minutes or so, the speed started going down a little bit. And I was in a fairly good position to, to attack. The guys in front stopped pedaling. So I figured I could try. I'm just going to go for move, see what happens. So I, 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 I jump and looking back, there's a couple guys who's uh, following. Here we have two riders who were chasing me but this one dude is already too far up the road so we are we already have a gap on him so we can't really work together really well and this just ended up to, to be nothing so here you see the peloton coming past us again it was i think we did about two laps separated from the peloton but then uh, they overtake us again and i i try to fall back a little bit to get some recovery there's a lot of riders together, so I try to sort of draft within these riders. And now it's just sort of waiting uh, for another move. There's a couple options. You can either uh, initiate a breakaway by yourself. Don't go for break at all and hope it's a field sprint. But I can pretty much assure you that criterions like this in Holland are never a field sprint. Uh, and if it's a field sprint, it's super hectic anyway, so chances of winning are pretty slim. Um, or you can react on somebody else or jump to a break. And usually the breakaways form because a couple separate little groups go up the road. And they, they sort of fuse together into a solid breakaway. This is also what happened in this race, what you're gonna see in next. Okay, 30 kilometers in the race, about 40 minutes, and it's very different than before. It's uh, five, six rid riders wide, there's actually a bunch. Right now it would actually be making sense to be riding in between those riders, so I would be drafting. I'm sort of next to these riders with my head in the wind, I'm not sure why, but anyway, there's a few riders up the road, and this is the situation what I explained before. So there's a couple of riders up the road. If they stay away long enough, people are getting a bit nervous, and there's gonna be guys that want to jump towards those first couple of riders. And I knew that, so I was gonna pay very close attention right now and I knew that if, if the speed would die down and somebody would attack to jump, I would have to be on it. So the guys in front here, they sort of stop pedaling and everybody's looking at each other. And I see the guy here left, black and red. And I follow him, but I don't attack. I don't jump on his wheel. I just sort of 
keep riding with a high power sitting on my saddle almost faking it that I'm really wanna go and then I go through the top corner and that's really when I put on power to get in his wheel so I didn't really wanna make it too obvious that I was gonna really hit it and jump towards the brake because then I would just be dragging the whole peloton because there was gonna be more more guys um, that were gonna get on my wheel since I was pushing so much power but now I just sort of rode off together with the other guy and then we pick up this Flossman rider here in yellow I'm not sure if, if he was dropped from the first two riders that are in front of us uh, but he joined us so now we are with three which is actually a pretty good number to uh, to make a jump towards a break and to close this gap. So I'm not sure how lo how far the gap was, but uh, it took us about uh, a lap or two to close it up. We were going pretty fast, uh, rotating with the three of us, so that worked out pretty well. You can see the riders right there; they're going through that corner now, and it's us three closing up this gap, and then we formed a group of five so here we approach the two riders that were in front and that's uh, Ivar Slick from uh, Monkey Town and one Maytag rider and actually we had one guy from uh, VPGA who joined us so that makes six so now we have a breakaway of six and looking back we had a pretty good gap towards the peloton so I was pretty confident about our numbers and if we you know work together well then uh, we had a really good chance to stay away until the finish we had about an hour left in this race about 50 kilometers and uh, 45 to 50 kilometers and we had a couple strong riders this is really when you can get some preems in the Dutch racing like I said before it's not just the first rider that gets a preem. So it's the first six or the first five or the first eight riders that get a preem. The first rider has the highest preem, obviously. But if you're in a breakaway like this and you work together really well and everybody understands this, then you're not going to fight each other for that preem. You're just going to keep rotating. Don't mess up organization because keeping that breakaway away from the peloton is far more important than sprinting somebody else to get that little extra euro in that preem because if you stay away then everybody's gonna get multiple preems so that's actually a really good way to to win a lot of preems right now I'm behind Ivar and dude this guy is a freaking tank he actually won the European Championship beach racing this weekend we went together to um, to France to do the Paris Roubaix KOM challenge on the Carrefour de Larbe cobble section if you want to check that video out uh, have a look at, uh, at the link in the description but yeah he was taking monster pulls Ifar was really taking monster pulls and this is where the where the preem started so there was a preem lap they ring the bell and Ifar crossed the line first I crossed the line second which is a good thing coming through the finish start finish again a couple minutes later they ring the bell again, another preem lap. Ivar's taking a monster pool and for some reason, every time he managed to cross the finish line first. I really didn't care. I thought he was worth it. He was pulling so hard and so such a long, he was taking such long turns that he really earned uh, all these preems. So uh, that was fine. But I was taking second preems every time on these uh, preem laps. So I was pretty happy with that. So meanwhile, there's another group who was jumping towards us, making the breakaway group that we are in now way too big. And you can see what happens then. Um, instead of us working together with the six of us, you know, dividing preems and just keep rotating while there's a preem lap, look what happens. Right now we are with a big group, so about six other riders joined us, and we are again on the preem lap. But this just screws everything up. And uh, when this happened, I pretty much knew like, ah, oh, this is, this is going to be the end of the breakaway. Because there's too many riders. Nobody really wants to pull. Everybody wants the, the rest to do it. And uh, there's these guys who just want to go for these single preems. As you can see right now, a 
approaching the finish. They start sprinting, going left and right, overtaking. And then right after the finish, there's no organization. People start looking at each other. Everybody's all over the place. Nobody's really rotating anymore. And it's just all messed up. So, yeah, this really was the end of the breakaway. It lasted for... Um, it only actually only lasted for about 20 minutes. Uh, we still have about 45 minutes in this race. And we did stay away for, for quite some time with this group. Because we were still going fast. And every time they ring the bell, everybody started sprinting like a maniac. But we didn't keep the breakaway going until the end of the race. Right now, another 20 minutes later. And we got uh, pulled back by the peloton. So, like I said, organization was screwed up. We were not going as fast with 12 riders as we were with the six uh, we had before. So then, yeah, that's it. Breakaway falls apart. Peloton comes back. And this really is the moment for a second attack. But I was tired, man. It was so hard, especially the, the second half of this breakaway where there's too many riders and everybody starts attacking each other for the stream laps. Uh, it's super surgy. It's not uh, a steady pace. And that's actually what makes it a lot harder. And we were still doing like 45k an hour or whatever. So it was really tough. And I really had spent a lot of energy. And uh, I, I had a hard time to, to stay in the front right now to get back. To jump back on a, another break. So this is a few minutes later. I uh, had a little bit of recovery. And I had some second thoughts. I figured I can do nothing. Stay in the peloton. And I'm pretty sure that I'm... You know won't have any chance or i'm just gonna try again because the last part of the race is when everybody's tired so when there's riders jumping it's almost like a mental game do you still have the stamina and the will to go so i figured fuck it i'm just gonna go i'm gonna jump i'll see how far i get so i, I jump behind this blue rider then this dude here in black he just shoots past me so i try to get on his wheel and just sitting in his wheel i could already feel i was having a hard time right here i try to overtake but he he just keeps on going so fast that i didn't even overtake him so i figured it's no use for me to go in front i'm just gonna stay behind him because i'm gonna die in his wheel like a slow painful death but anyway um i got in front i tried to pull a little bit but i didn't really have a lot left and this also didn't end in a, in a really successful attack. There's a couple of guys on the road. Um, you can see them right there. But we, I, I didn't have the power to, to uh, keep on going long enough. So we could close the gap. Even with these guys joining us. I was just uh, dead. Right here I couldn't hold the wheel. They ride off away from me. I was looking back. There's a lot of riders behind us. So we pretty much have the the entire peloton behind us. So it was no use um, to keep it going because we're just going to drag the peloton. So what's left after being in the breakaway, not making it in the break till the finish, is uh, the, the field sprint. So yeah, there is still a field sprint even though there was a breakaway of... Uh, I think it was pretty big. There was about 10 riders. Like I said before couple riders jump a couple more riders jump they fuse they make a break and we in the peloton were i think we were approaching these guys again towards the finish and right now we have only a few laps to go and i'm back in the group trying to recover a little bit for that last two laps because they're always crazy um let's jump to the last lap and see how crazy that last lap was this is uh, about two laps, one and a half lap to go, and uh, it's getting crowded, as you can see. Whole group is uh, back together. We're halfway up the race, we're all single file in this part. Now we're all like five, six riders wide, pushing each other through these corners. And uh, yeah, everybody's trying to move up to the front. Right now, this is the last corner before we hit the last lap. So here, coming over start finish, it would be last lap, and then. Um, we would be sprinting for, I think it's place, maybe place 10 or something, or 15. There's a, quite a few rides up the road, but still, all these guys were serious, man. It's like a race for uh, for the win, it doesn't matter. 
So here we go. The bell lap, last lap, and it's dying down. As you can see, all these guys on the left here, they just lose momentum. And this group shoots past. I jump on it because I knew that from this... By the way, right there, you can see the break. Those guys are riding in front of us. So we were really approaching them pretty, pretty close. And if we could keep up the speed high enough, we could overtake the break before the last corner and then we would be sprinting for first place. Um, as you can see here, we've got two corners to go and this is really when the sprint already starts. So in a crit like this, there's no big lead out with five riders um, with a final punch for the sprint. No, it's a sprint for every corner for the la entire last lap. It's crazy. As you can see, it's freaking hectic. All these guys are moving left and right around each other and uh, this is the last lap. Two riders in black here, they, they, I think they let it go a little bit uh, through this last corner. I take it on the inside, overtake a few riders, get on the rider in blue here. And here I make another final mistake by going on the left side of him because here I want to start sprinting. I see there's no room on the inside so I need to wait, go around him and then give a little extra punch so I could only overtake maybe two riders. So yeah, I got the uh, final result was 21st I think. Not that important because I had a great race. I actually won a lot of preems thanks to, uh, to Ivar, I think. So uh, Ivar, if you watch this, you're the man. And um, because I was doing a little bit more of these criteriums, I felt better and better. Still not perfect, still room for improvement. Guys, I wanna thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe on my channel and leave a comment down below. Gonna see you next time. See ya! Yeah guys, here's just a quick mention. Don't forget to check out www.cfcyclingcamp.com to check out my freaking awesome cycling camp on Mallorca coming April.